On this episode of One on One, one of the more well-known educators in the area, we're going to find out how he rose to the top, what kind of hard work he put in, and we're going to take a life journey with Mr. James Charles. It's all next on this episode of One on One. One on One is brought to you by the Law Office of Waits and Downer. And welcome back to One on One. I'm Martin Foss, and as I told you going into the break, our guest tonight is Mr. James Charles, who sort of worked his way up to the top in very interesting fashion. So tonight, we're going to learn a little bit more about Mr. Charles and his journey as an educator and also as a community activist along the way. Mr. Charles, welcome to the program. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Let's set the scene. Where were you born? Bring us back to the earliest years you could remember and sort of paint a picture for me if you can. Well, uh, I was born on Bayou de Lourdes uh, back in 42. And uh, we were raised there. It was eight uh, children in the family, mother and father, who did not have the opportunity to receive maximum education, but had a burning desire that every one of us would reach our optimal uh, potential. And as a result of that, uh, out of those eight children, uh, my mother had got eight degrees, college degrees. Wow. Uh, we, we worked. Uh, there was no such thing as uh, you could you had missed a day from school unless you were ill or something of that nature. Uh, Martin, during that time, I walked to school. So I don't buy excuses today of why we have dropouts, why we have absenteeism, uh, those things. I don't buy that because whether it was raining or not, we had to get there, and we were there. There were no uh, free or reduced lunches, nothing. You brought it from home. There was no entitlement. None of that, but a desire to do the best you can. Uh, my mother would always tell us that we don't have a lot, but you have pride and never destroy that. I started South Down in the fourth grade. Really? Yes, and yes. I tell everybody that I had more tenure at South Down than anybody with that seven and a half years. Right. Uh, but it was starting at the fourth grade. And we went through there with a very excellent principal, Mr. Adrian P. Pertee. His type of administration led all of us to want to be successful, want to look at the things that he was doing and that he did. There are two things that make schools good or great, parents and teachers. Mm -hmm. That's it. And so if you're able to uh, get those things in place, mm -hmm. then you're going to be successful. Your students are going to be successful. And that's the way that we look at it, and that's the attitude that I took as I went through the ranks. Do mm -hmm. the best you can, come back, and see what you can do to help somebody. And that's the thing that I learned coming up and, and, and for that to, to be excellent in the thing that uh, was done, not just do it because we had to do it. Mm -hmm. We took pride in having our uh, words on Friday placed on the bulletin board at school. We took pride in being better than the girls in the class. Mm -hmm. It was never that, uh, that thing that we were going to slack back and not do anything. It was always a prideful thing that we had. It made it a fun competition, in other words. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, now your mom, was she the disciplinarian of the family? Who was the disciplinarian? Well, obviously, you, the mom was always. Uh, mm -hmm. So she took care of that part while he worked. When we walked into that yard coming from school, you better be ready to go over what, everything that you did at school. Mm -hmm. You know, what was the reading lesson about? Explain it to me. What was the math assignment about? You right. had to bring that to her. And uh, she was there with mm -hmm. us. And later on in life, when she was able to do it, she uh, went back to school. And my, my father was an avid reader, even though he had 
uh, fourth grade of formal education, mm -hmm. this guy would read all day and every day. Mm -hmm. And he kept us in, uh, in check with that because he would come up to you and he ask you questions. Yeah. And you know, it was always about education in our home. They could have been like a lot of average parents and not challenge their kids, but they challenged each and every one of y'all to where you said eight college degrees. That's pretty good. They were approached by people and they would tell us that all the time. They would come up to them that you have all of these boys, see it was seven boys and one girl. All of these boys, why don't you put these boys to work? And you can get money and you all can have more money. And uh, they can go out into the cane fields. And uh, my father was, we lived on the farm. My father never worked in cane field. Mm -hmm. He refused to do it. Uh, he worked as a dairyman uh, for a while. And then he took jobs uh, at the Grand Elevator in New Orleans and things of this nature. But he, but he thought bigger of himself. Therefore, his children were going to be bigger than him. Right. Absolutely, and uh, the, the thing that, that really that bothers me, well, not bothered me, but it worried me for a while, that he died in November and I graduated in December. I wanted so bad to, for him to see right. me walk across that state at Southern University. There's been several issues in the parish that y'all have got involved in, but never in a demeaning way or a rowdy way or a self-serving way, if you felt like you could help the cause, y'all got involved. Was this something that he instilled in you all? Yes, you do things that matters. Uh, just to do something to be doing it, it doesn't make sense. Right. And, and just running around, uh, getting into trouble and uh, doing things that were not necessary. He, he, he couldn't handle that with us and he, mm -hmm. uh, kept that before us, you know, you leave that house. Right. You know, you, you remember you are a man. Mm -hmm. And so that carried into, we're trying to get, I know my brother Robert was highly involved in the teacher strike. Yes. Uh, and uh, to try to do some things to bring some order to that. We also set up a, uh, a summer operation where we had over 800 uh, children involved. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the Department of the Interior came down and uh, the assistant commissioner, and he called the commissioner and tried to get him to come see because they'd never seen anything like that, that we can have so many kids working mm -hmm. in the harmony that we were trying to Was to that get at through. Dumas? That was, at, that was throughout the parish. Yeah, but I remember, I think we had a press conference one yes, time. Yes, you had you, you came over to Dumas. Yeah. Uh, to, to, uh, and that really worked out well. It worked out real well, and uh, sad to say that some folks got their hands in it and mm -hmm. destroyed it. For all of your cases, including those with catastrophic significance, call Waits and Downer Law Firm. So you graduate from Southern University. What was your first job? Eighth grade math teacher at South Down High School. Uh, when I came out, a uh, young man left in the middle of the year, and uh, Mr. Adrian Perti, my mm -hmm. former principal, right. he was uh, a, at the central office at that time, and he came in and talked to him and asked him to, to hire me for the job because, uh, as he put it, I was one of his boys. <laughs> uh, so you said South Down High, high school. school. High School. A lot of people don't realize that I mean, it was, you went in the fourth grade, I think you said you went from fourth through, but then it became a high school. Then it became a high school, and uh, we came back, and I worked there for uh, that semester. And then the next semester is when they came with the unified schools, mm -hmm. and I was transferred to uh, Evergreen Junior High. Mm -hmm. And I stayed at Evergreen and uh, living at Dulard and driving to Evergreen every day is a distance. Mm -hmm. So I requested a transfer and they sent me back uh, to South Down and I stayed there until uh, I went into the central office as a 
curriculum person. You had humble beginnings in school, you worked your way around, and all of a sudden, you're the principal of a high school. So everything is starting, everything your father told you and your mama instilled in you, it's starting to happen now. When you became principal, did you say, amen? <laughs> well, it, it, it was a sense of uh, pride, of accomplishment that we had, and I can't leave out Mr. Adrian Petit, right. uh, my high school principal, right. uh, because of the discipline that he taught. And uh, truthfully, I carried a lot of that into mm -hmm. the schools that uh, uh, I was uh, the administrator with, uh, because there are things that, that, that work. Uh, first and foremost, you have to have the discipline in order to get the program to move. Right. That's the first thing. So then we emphasize that. They call me mean, but uh, now they are uh, happy and they come back. Uh, my greatest uh, joy is the fact that a kid would come up and say that, you remember when you told me never to give up? I said, well, I didn't. I'm a lawyer now. Right. You know, that's the kind of uh, thing that I get from the entire uh, teaching and learning mm -hmm. situation. And you did come across stern, but I know the other side of you that has that gigantic heart. So how did you put on that? It had to be a front because I know your heart, but you had to put that front on or else they'll walk all over you. Right. You must have discipline. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're able to get the, the discipline with it, and you can't sit there and uh, play with kids uh, and, and joke with them and be their buddies. Uh, I don't do that with my own children. Mm -hmm. uh, but if right. they want something, <laughs> if, if they, <laughs> they find a way of getting it. Right. And it's the same thing with uh, uh, my students. Uh, I try to uh, be show them that I am a man, I am your leader, uh, I'm going to do the things and, and I'm going to model the behavior that I want. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to catch me out there doing any and everything. That's not going to happen mm -hmm. because it's just not a part of me. So right. I want them to look the same way and carry forward uh, in a positive way, doing the best they can and get the enjoyment out of, and I tell them all the time, how do you feel? I'll ask them, how do you feel when you make an eight? It's a great feeling. Well, why don't you want that feeling all the time? Right. And, and you know, so that's what we, uh, we, we try to do. And we know that there are needs with a lot of our children, tremendous needs. Mm -hmm. And that's where the soft part come in, that you reach back and you do out in the community the things that you can in order to help them. Or if someone is, uh, uh, having a difficult uh, problem, what you can do to help them solve it. Not to give, mm -hmm. but to assist in solving right. problems. Uh, giving is easy. To go up and give somebody mm -hmm. a handful of money is easy. But that doesn't solve anything. For all of your cases, including those with catastrophic significance, call Waits and Downer Law Firm. What was it like to be sent to Mr. James Charles's office when you were the principal at Allendale? <laughs> it, uh, it was three of us. And we operated as a team. Mm -hmm. uh, David Berg, right. Philip Martin, and James Charles. Okay. Uh, Philip was the uh, was the nice guy, and uh, I was the bad guy. Okay. So we uh, we played that game, right. and uh, they didn't want to see me. They right. wanted to see Mr. Uh, Mr. Philip. If you, you come in to see me, then you must have a problem. The good guy, bad guy routine. That's, that's what we that's used what, for a long time. That's what we, we had to do with them. And uh, they, they, they liked both of us because we were upfront and honest with them. You know, right. we, we have stories that, that occurred out there that uh, you wouldn't believe. But, you know, we had to, de I had to deal with things like 
I need to take my kid out of school because he had to go to work to help me on the shrimp boat. Or an honor student saying, well, Mr. Charles, I can't come back. I'm not going to go to college. I'll be down to buy you with my family working. And you have to, you have to be that counselor to sit there with those kids and try to figure a way, even to the point that I've gone out and asked uh, employers to give them a job. Mm -hmm. And it makes all the difference in the world right? Uh, that they can get and start doing something and earning things and, and being able to go to school at the same time. A lot That's of kids- That's gonna be different for a principal to have a person sitting in, a student sitting in your office saying, Mr. Charles, I can't finish my senior year because I'm going to work in the boat. All right. That, 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 that's that. the area. That's, that's where the two schools on the bayou area where the families make their living on the water. That was a challenge, wasn't it? That's a challenge. And uh, it, it's, it's they've broken that up now uh, to some degree. And I'm sure that some of them are still slipping out and, and, and going. But... Uh, you know, daddy come in the office and said, look, I got to have the boy, I hurt my back. And, and I can't work no more, and we need right. this boat to, to ride, so. Uh, and you feel for the parent, too, because they're trying to put food on the table. Right. But you see the potential right. of the student, and you don't want to lose them at that point. Right. That's where you do everything that you can uh, do to help uh, those people, because uh, that run that falls into that category uh, mm -hmm. of, of fall on hard times. Uh, anything that you can do that you know you want to do, uh, and I, I, I try to do that. I can't look away and say uh, I can't help you. I can't. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it's going out and ask somebody to, to give him a, a part-time job and right. uh, 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 getting in your car and, uh, and bringing them home. Uh, Right. All of those things is a part of that, so mm -hmm. uh, you have to have a heart. But then by the same token, you can't have them sitting in your classroom, tying the classroom up either. Right. That's so right. that side of it comes back out. So a lot of these situations that you were in with some of your students, you would fall back into, what did my old principal do to us? Right. As I say, he was very strict. and. Uh, you couldn't miss the bus. Mm -hmm. That was a no-no. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't come to school if you missed that bus. So you have to be on time. And I carried that whether that was teachers or students. You know, you have to be here. You were a half hour early for the show today. Right. That's yeah. punctual. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't, <laughs> yeah. Want, I didn't want to come here. Uh, well, no, but that's, you know. I mean, that's, you, you're practicing what you preach. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's one thing and being an academic student is another. Ball and all of that's good. I love uh, uh, sports, but at eight o'clock to three o'clock, you're a student. Mm -hmm. For all of your cases, including those with catastrophic significance, Call Waits and Downer Law Firm. This one on one program has been brought to you by the law offices of Waits and Downer.